we haven't got a warrant. Then we'll just have to knock George as only polite. Sweeney, stay where you are. Get surrounded. What are you? Shut up, you? face the wall. Arms, legs stretch. You know the form stand. Check them, Sarge. Roll in. I do hope it's all there, Stan. Because if there's one thing I can't stand, is villains turning over the bank where I keep my money. Hang on, then. Where's Danny? He didn't look out, is he? Watch him. I see. So much for honor amongst thieves. Welcome back to Who Done It. Now, if you haven't watched us before, your job is to try and work out who done that fella in, what's got the knife sticking out of his back. Now, in a moment, all the people in that office will try to explain to the police what they were doing up to the time when the inspector found the dead body. So you'll be able to see in flashback exactly what happened. But remember that the murderer or murderess, because I don't allow sex discrimination on this program, is allowed to lie. So don't believe everything that you see or hear unless I say it, because I've got an honest face. <laughs> That at least proves you've got a studio audience. <laughs> now, after all that's over, the suspects will be cross-examined by our panel of expert detectives. Yes, well, on second thoughts, our panel of wild guessers. And the first panelist is that top actress in her own right who also happens to be married to John Thor of Sweeney fame, so she should get this one easily enough, Sheila Hancock. <laughs> and a man who you'll shortly recognize as Piso and I, Claudius, but as a second verdict on his identity might be Barlow, Stratford Johns. <laughs> a Greek American singer and actor whose brother has the lollipops and he has the hair, George Savalas. <laughs> but the fourth panelist is going to be different this series. Recently, the TV Times. Uh, here's the TV Times. They rang a big Who Done It competition where you had to work out who carved up Mr. Carver and why. Now, the prize for the best seven correct entrants was to appear on this program. So, will you welcome the first TV Times winner, Jim Fox of Chipping Sobbering Red <laughs> You, I believe, are an insurance broker, Jim, is that right? That's right, yes. Yes, well, I hope your company haven't insured all the money that's just been stolen in this row. So why? Right. The extra bonus for Jim is that he guesses, or if he guesses who done it correctly, he can take home a souvenir from the scene of the crime, apart from the actors, that is. And if any of the other three get it right, they will get from me two choruses of wonders will never cease. <laughs> right. <laughs> now then, uh, back to the plot where Detective Inspector Todd of the Sweeney, not to be confused with Sweeney Todd the Demon Barber, is trying to solve the murder of Danny Moore. And remember this, there are four genuine clues for you to spot. Yeah. Yeah, make it quick. Oh, no. Not content with doing a bank, we got on murder one Danny in the same afternoon. Stan, come and tell Uncle Bill all about it. Sergeant, put the others in there. I'm waiting, Stan. Don't well, ask me, Inspector. I was trying to find out for myself. Yeah, well, we've got a couple of minutes until the paddy wagon arrives, so let's start at the beginning, shall we? You did the job, all drove over here, walked in through that door, and... Well, we just came in here to sort out the money before we split up. Right, chuck it all out on the table. That's it. Nine minutes past three, right on schedule. All Good. clear, Stan. No one's all come up. Good, but I'm not taking any chances. Danny, get in there, stand by the window, keep your eyes open, will you? Chuck, you the same. Yeah? In the car, see? And look out for the boys in blue. Here, yeah. so supposing they ain't in uniform. But with your form, you ought to be able to smell them by now. Go on, go on, move. Right, now, Nobby, great bit of driving. Ta. Get your gloves off, make the team. Right, separate all the sweaters, tens, fivers, and onces. That's it. Who's got my knife? In my handbag, where you told me to put it, great leader. Don't get cheeky with me, girl. When you finish having a guard more, missus. Missus? Oh, <laughs> Not for long. Now, I'm warning you, Vera, lay off. And that goes to your boyfriend as well. Will you leave off? Here, Stan, this clock in here. 
Is it really 3.20 already? No, it's 10 past. Yeah, only 10 past. So it's 10 minutes fast, so what? Well, as long as I know that's all, I just thought we were running late. Well, we will be if you keep holding us up. Then we started to rip open the packets and split up the money. Did Danny ever come out of there again? Not that I noticed. Anyway, it seems that he grasped on us, so serve him right. Did the stupid git ring you? Information received. Don't anybody try and make a run for it, you're being watched. It's a three-story drop. Who's outside watching them then? Nobody but a run division, they'll be here any minute. Shouldn't we wait till they Look, get George, here? George, I've solved the robbery for him. Now I intend to sort out Danny's death guest, so get me his loving bride, Vera, will you? Yeah, if you leave the others in there together, they'll cook up some story. Not for life, they won't. The robbery's been cracked, and there's not one of those villains who's prepared to go down for murder they didn't commit. So get Vera in. All right. Miss? Long time since I was caught, Miss. Yeah, we are now, because the old man's copped it. Unlamented by you, are you? Did you chop him? Aren't I supposed to be questioned in the presence of a policewoman? Sergeant Emerson is a policewoman, in disguise. Very good one at that. Answer that question, Vera. No, of course not. I admit I wanted to get rid of him, but by divorce only. But he wouldn't divorce you. Has that Stan been telling you all this? Nah, just guessing. Sticks out of my love. Did you ever go in there and see Danny when he was on lookout? No. I stayed in here with Stan, counting the money all the time. Well, I can tell you. The 20,000, the five... All oh, right, all right, I'm just checking for new banknotes. They are traceable. Well, you're not going to throw them away, are you? No, stupid, we're going to hang on to them for a little while, that's all. Where are you off to? Oh, the loo, don't panic. Well, it's 3.15, hurry up, we've got to get out of here. Chuck! Hello. Come on out of there, I want to use it. And while you're in there, keep your eyes open. Oh, how do you expect me to keep my eyes open at the same time? Don't... Well, hurry up, then! Oh. I must have been in there about five minutes. When I came out, I, I stayed in here until we found out Danny had bought it. Ask the others if you like. I will, Vera, I will. Sergeant, get Chuck in. Right. When was the last time you saw the knife that Stan was cutting open these bank packets with then? Well, I don't know. After I put him right about the amounts, so he put it on the table, and that must have been the last time I saw it. Right, back with the others, love. Chuck, come over here. You were on lookout in there, right? Right. When Vera went in, you came out for a while, and then you... That's right, yes, I, I went in there to see Danny. Did you now? Well, we'll talk about that later. How long was Vera in there? I don't know, about five or seven minutes. Stan was a bit upset with me because I was wasting time with Danny in there. Stop creeping about. Get back on lookout and keep your eyes open. All right, Stan, all right. Vera! Boy, Vera! Yeah, she ain't answering, Stan. Oh, what's the matter with that girl? Come out of it. Vera! Vera! All right, all right. I'm only doing myself up. I did hear you. Just because I don't believe in shouting back, there's no need to get your knickers in a twist. Yeah, did you open that window? What's the matter with you? <gasps> Trying to attract attention? Oh, give over. I only wanted some air. Get in there and shut that window. Go on. So I went back in and kept a lookout till they told me Danny was dead. Very good, Chuck. Sergeant. Go and have a look out the next window and see if this ledge runs right the way around the building, OK? Right. Oh, I see. You mean Vera could have slipped round outside the building up at Danny's window? Yeah. Yeah, she could have done, Chuck. On the other hand, the only other person who could have done would have been you. <laughs> Welcome back to Who Done It, where we're trying to find out who put a stop to Danny Moore's life by sticking this dagger in his back. <laughs> Which will also put a stop to people hiding under my desk during the program. <laughs> now then, there's uh, been a bank robbery, but when the police caught up with the gang in their hideout, they found all the money and one dead robber. The possible suspects are Stan Johnson, leader and brains of this gang, but Chuck James, a heavy villain with very little brains at all, Nobby Fry, the getaway car driver, who is rather keen on Vera Moore, the only lady in the gang who is married to Danny Moore, or, or rather was, because he is now dead. And I should rule out suicide, as it's very difficult to stick a knife in your own back. <laughs> Detective Inspector Bill Todd is investigating, assisted by Sergeant Emerson. Todd now continues with Chuck. Well, I didn't even open that window. Yeah, well, I'll just have to trust you, won't I, Chuck? Because nobody saw whether you did or you didn't. Now, let's go back to when you went in to see Danny. Well, you're right, right Governor. <clears throat> that ledge does go all the way around out there. Right, you were saying, Chuck? Well, I'll come out of there. Of course, Vera wanted to use it. Why are we up there? 
Want any help with the money then, Stan? Oh, come on, Chuck, you can't even count properly. Oh, thank you. Oh. Yes, exactly where I told you yesterday. And you better hurry up, because we're going to be leaving here soon. And make it about a foot deep and keep the turf in one piece. Right, see you in about half an hour, Ma. Here, what are you doing on the phone? Stan said no one was supposed Shh, to do that. All right, no need to shout. I was just having a few words with my old Ma. I wanted to dig a hole in the garden so I can bury my share of the loot. I want it ready, but I want to get home. Oh, yeah. And what about that window? Ain't you supposed to be looking? You can't see anything out here. Well, let's open it then. You're getting a bit keen, son, ain't you? Here, you're going to need the key to unlock it. Yeah, another thing about this money split. 50% to you, me, Vera and Nobby, and 40% to Stan. I ain't stand it by that, I can tell you. Well, he thought of it and organised it. If nothing goes wrong, he deserves it, doesn't he? Now listen, you get in there and tell Vera to leave that Nobby alone or else. I'm not interested in your marital things. Oh, go on, help it. Then I came back. Well, at first, Vera wouldn't open the door. Yeah, yeah, he told me that already. Sergeant, get Nobby out here. You've been very helpful, Chuck. And the moral of the story is better 15% of the take and 20% of nothing. Eh? Eh. Forget it. Nobby Fry, Governor. <clears throat> Bit of a flash driver. Yeah. So, uh, you were driving where, Nobby? Yeah. I didn't p take part in the raid at all. I was just hired to Yeah, drive well, we'll let the law look after that, shall we? Yeah, I've got some somewhere. And one of mine. About this, uh, about this other business. Did you ever go in to see Danny when he was on lookout? Yeah. Soon after we got it. Stan and Vera started sorting the money out, so I went in for a chat. You're supposed to be looking out the window. Can't you get out there, can you? Well, why don't you try opening it? Because it's locked. Is that the key, then? Why don't you stop interfering? I'm only trying to help, mate. Do you want a ciggy? Yeah. Could have a couple, eh? Mind you, don't know what all this fuss about lookouts is. I mean, the old Bill done it, no done it, let alone where to find us. Unless somebody told him. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you better stay near the window until this stand comes in. I'll see you. Well, he didn't seem in a talkative mood, so I came back in here to see if I could help Stan and Vera in any way. And that's the last time I saw him alive. And he didn't mention you and Vera at all? Eh? Oh, no. Actually, we'd had words about that a few days ago, but we couldn't do anything till he agreed to a divorce. Yeah, well, you can now, Nobby. After a few years in the scrubs. Sergeant, get Mr. 40% in here again. You're a good driver then, Nobby? Yeah. I got it from the bank in six and a half minutes flat. Really? Yeah, it's very good. We'd do you for speeding as well. Well then, Stan. Get a bit greedy, eh? Going for a lot more than what the others were getting. So I set it all up. It was my job. Anyway, what business is it of yours? None at all. It's all gone now. Only one of the others might have got annoyed about it. Now then, we've all heard about Vera's escapades in the loo, but there's a blank. Right after Chuck goes back on guard. Well, well there's not much to tell. When Chuck went back, I just did the rounds. Here, Stan. I know it's none of my business and that. But that Danny in there, he's been ringing his mum on the blower. Has he? Yeah. All right, shut the window. All right, Stan. Oh, come on, sort the money out. You stupid git. What? Did you open that window? Yeah, well, I thought it'd be easy. You thought? You didn't think enough, did you? Shut it and lock it. I hear you've been on the telephone to your mother. Oh, very low, that chap is, any. he? Yeah, I just had a few words with my old mama. Well, I didn't tell her anything, don't worry. Well, I hope so, for your sake. Now, leave the phone alone. You don't speak to anybody. Get by the window. Keep your eyes open. If you see anything or anybody, tell me. Right, well, I picked on the phone with his mother in the middle of a job. Whose fags are these? Nobby's. Nobby? Pack's empty. You sorted out the fivers? Yes. Right, let's do the split up then. And I got on with the money counting, so I didn't see Danny again till he was dead. Ah. 
So you were the last one in there then? What? Oh, I don't know. I mean, what with the money and everything, anybody could have slipped in that room without being noticed. Mr. Todd. Yeah? Before I go in, can I have one last question? Did Danny grasp to you? No, Stan lad. Someone in the bank knows you, recognised your voice. They told me. I knew this drummer yours, so I came straight over. Like I said, information received. <laughs> You remember that I told you there were four clues? Well, just to help you even more, there were eight red herrings. That's confused you, hasn't it? Now, before we get on with the questions panel, you are each allowed an instant replay of any of the action that you've just seen. So let's choose those first, shall we? Stratford, what would you like to see again? I think I'd like to see where the young lady Vera uh, went into the... Garzi. Uh, the loo. Uh, the loo. Right. Sheila, what would you like to see again? Um. I like to see where uh, the, the driver, uh, no, no, the one that's in love with Vera, the driver, Nobby, Nobby gave yes. a cigarette to the man that's murdered. Right, George. I think I'd like to see that bit where uh, Chuck goes back in to talk to the victim. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jim. Um, I think I'd like to see that bit where the Sweeney first break into the room when they kick the door open. Right. And now it's cross-examination time. Let's start with you. Stratford Johns, would you like to ask a question? Mm, yes, I'd like to ask the inspector first of all, Inspector Todd. Do you think that the uh, unnecessary violence of your entry into the, the premises was entirely uh, reasonable? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this Under was a simple robbery. Pardon? This was a simple robbery. Had you any ind indication? Had you been told that they were armed? No, no, but you've got to, you know, what I wanted to do was get in and surprise them, you know, and I had to do it. I was dealing with villains. I knew there were villains in there. So yes, indeed, yes, indeed. The door, Sergeant, you did take uh, notes of all of the, the cross-questioning? Not all of them, no. I wasn't in with uh, Stan. I see, right, fine. I'll see your notes afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Inspector, um, why was the, uh, the body left unattended? I mean, I presume you did uh, look at the body, you examined it, did you? Yeah, I, I think you know that I, uh, I actually looked at the well, body. Well, you so sort of appeared to look sort of uh, well, slightly down at it, but yes, but you actually called forensic. Um, you called forensic and uh, fin fingerprints as well, did you? Yeah, scene of crimes offices, yeah. yeah. Uh, fine, 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 that's right. <laughs> now, um, a young lady, I'd like to ask, um, why were you so worried about whether Stan should have said something about you? Well, it's, it's my business, nothing to do with him, is it? Oh, look, madam, I'm asking you questions, don't you start, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might not be in the Sweeney, but, you know, we do have our own methods. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Johns, are you not Mr. Johns? Mm. But of course. <laughs> I'm on that you sound like thing. Barlow. <laughs> Rubbish. Barlow is a puff compared with me, mate. No, 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 no. All right. Well, ready, I get ready going. For, ready for the first replay. And the first replay is for Jim Fox. Jim, you wanted to see <coughs> the very beginning of the show when the Sweeney burst into the office and found the bank robbers around the table. Here it is. But we haven't got a warrant. Then we'll just have to knock George. It's only polite. Sweeney, stay where you are. It's surrounded. What are you Shut doing? Shut up, you? face the wall. Arms, legs stretch. You know the form stand. Check him, Sergeant. Well then, I do hope it's all there, Stan. Because if there's one thing I can't stand, is villains turning over the bank where I keep my money. Hang on then. Jim leapt forward there and grasped his pencil and hurriedly wrote a note. That helped you, Jim, did it? Slightly, yeah. It did. Right, Good. Would you like to ask a question pertaining to what you've just seen? Yes. Could I ask Stan, the gang leader, how much money did you actually take from this bank robbery? Stan, Stan. What? <laughs> <laughs> how much money did you actually get from this bank robbery? Well, I thought it was going to be about 25,000. I'm not sure because somebody turned me over for a couple of grand while we did the job. Well, I thought it was going to be about 25, 26. It didn't matter. It was a good tickle. Could I ask Detective... You understand the Sorry. meaning of the word yes. tickle, of course. Yes. yes. Uh, Sex wasn't Todd. coming into the robbery at the time. 
Yeah. Inspector Todd, uh, was any money missing when you actually checked it? You know, when you got back there, when you counted um, it, was any money missing? Or well, George, you did that. What was it? There's yeah, a grand missing from. Yeah. Nobody's pocket. Would we speak up? Uh, yeah, there was a there was a there was a grand missing. See what I mean? One thousand pounds was missing. Yeah, quite. Um, can I ask, uh, Vera? Have you a good head for heights? Average. Nothing special. Right, Jim. All right? Yes, sir. George, would like to ask a question? Yeah, what's a tickle? Well, <laughs> 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 that I know. What does a tickle mean around here? It was a good robbery. It was a good job. A good robbery? Yeah. And parsley? Uh, Carsley? What is it? Oh, Kazi, that is the, to the toilet, the, the, the lavatory. Well, why in blazes don't you say toilet? <laughs> it's Kazi. Because we, uh, we speak that First strange, of though. all, I don't understand. Uh, uh, officer, you were tipped off about a bank robbery, right? You no. were informed. You were grasped. You were what? We call no, it no, stool. I mean, I, I, had had, I got an idea there was a job coming off, yeah. But but I mean, it wasn't tipped off. You said you were informed. No, somebody told me at the bank. Bank messenger, in fact. He was, in, he was informed, George. He was not grasped. When I, when I got down to the scene of the crime, the bank messenger knew him. Having been informed, yeah. having been informed that there was going to be a robbery in progress, usually the bank would be full of policemen and women to protect the depositors. There'd be cars outside and the periphery, if you wanted the whole mob, to trail them. You approach the door without a warrant. You know who's inside. You're unarmed. You're dealing with a bunch of people who've just committed a bank robbery and their adrenaline is going 100 miles an hour. They'll blow you away faster than they can bat an eyelash because they've got the money and they don't want to go to jail. All of that's somehow incredulous. No, no, no. See, see, what you don't understand is the way we handle things over here, you see. First of all, you're wrong. In the respect, I didn't know what bank was going to be turned over, right? So I only found that out when I got down on the job, right? Now, we don't carry weapons, anything like, anything like that, you know, I mean... No, I you, really think you, you did you it. Get, <laughs> you do. Save it. Don't Save tell me what you'd suit with that, will you? Uh, <laughs> Sheila, best The British here, you see, we don't have guns. And right, you are, like my that, dear. That's right. <laughs> um, may I just ask uh, Vera, how long has this been going on between you and... What's his name? Mm. Nobby. Nobby. Six months. About six months. Mm. Um... How, what's your relationship with uh, Stan, the gang leader? Have you known one another long? <coughs> well, not all that long. I mean, I know of him. Um, I knew of him before I met him, but uh, he was doing this job. He wanted other people to come in and help, and so... Uh, and what was your part in the job? What did you actually do f in the robbery? Me? I uh, kept the assistant manager um, busy while they did the, did the raid. Why did you wear gloves? Well, fingerprints. But you weren't going to put fingerprints on the assistant manager that they could detect? No, but I mean, oh, I could put uh, fingerprints on the counter or where, wherever I was. I, you can't be too careful. I see. I see. Right. I mean? Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> no, no, no. That was uh, nobody voicing an opinion. That was the buzzer. <laughs> Show us we are now ready for the next replay, which is Stratford John's. Mr. Stratford, you asked for some extraordinary reason to see Vera going into the loo again. Just <laughs> the way she and walked. <laughs> so you shall. They Here are it is. Traceable. Well, you're not gonna throw them away, are you? No, stupid. We can hang on to them for a little while, that's all. Where are you off to? Oh, the loo. Don't panic. Well, it's 3.15. Hurry up. We've got to get out of here. Chuck! Hello. Come on out of there. I want to use it. And while you're in there, keep your eyes open. Oh, how do you expect me to keep my eyes open at the same time? Don't... Well, hurry up, then. Oh. I must have been in there about five minutes. Yes, Stratford is obviously absolutely sure of what he's doing. He wasn't watching the replay at all. Mm. He was busy writing, so you're obviously onto something. Oh, ah, yes, yes, all right. So would you like to ask any questions appertaining to that? Oh, what do you mean? All immediately? Well, I'll yes, give the not. whole thing away. You don't have to. Stanley, dear fellow. Now, what was your relationship with the young lady, for starters? I just employed her, that's all. Don't call me dear fellow, either. You might be a copper, but I'm not bent, you know. Look, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my lads on to you if you're not careful. You're all right. <laughs> right, and also, Stanley, after you had um, been given your knife back by the young lady, what did you do with it? Well, I used it to open up the packets. If I remember rightly, rather stupidly, I left it on the table, and I should have put it in my pocket, but oh. I didn't. It wound up in that geezer's back. Uh, that is true, Stanley. Uh, because you put it there? No, I did not, Mr. Barlow. Oh, I see. Right. 
Uh, did you notice anybody else move the knife? I've got to admit I didn't. That's mm -hmm. why I was stupid again. I see. Yeah, we're ready for the next replay. The next one is yours, George. Uh, you wanted to see Chuck and Danny talking together during Chuck's flashback. Here it is. Watch it closely. Exactly where I told you yesterday. And you'd better hurry up, because we're going to be leaving here soon. Uh, and make it about a foot deep and keep the turf in one piece. Right, see you in about half an hour, Ma. Here, what are you doing on the phone? Stan said no one was supposed Shh, to do that. All right, no need to shout. I was just having a few words with my old ma. I wanted to dig a hole in the garden so I can just bury my share of the loot. I want it ready, but I want to get home. Oh, yeah. And what about that window? Ain't you supposed to be looking? You can't see anything out here. Well, let's open it then. All right. Jim, any questions you'd like to ask? Uh, yes. I'd like to ask the sergeant. When you went in there, what was the actual time on the clock on the wall? Into the murder room, you mean? That's right, yes. Which time? <coughs> when you first went in, when you kicked the door time. in, when you first went in, what was the actual time on the clock wall? Yeah, the first time I went in there, I think it was, uh, it was 3... 3.20... Mm. No, 3.27. 3.27. All right, Jim. George. You were about to ask a question, I think. I went over the top of you. 3.27 is the first time you walked in that room. That's when I went in that room, when I pushed them all in there, and Stan was being questioned by an inspector in the main office. I see. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask uh, Nobby a question. You dipped into the till there and uh, picked up a little packet and put it in your pocket. Did you pick the knife up, too? Hello? No, I didn't pick up the knife. You're a bloody liar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's Stratford, yes. No, I just would like to ask Chuck, because uh, I seem to recognize you, lad. Have you ever been a cat burglar? Now, look, Your Honor, I mean, Mr. Pertwee. Yes, sir. Now, that Frank Winsor there knows that he put me away <laughs> for five years on the other channel. <laughs> Burgling, but that's got nothing to do with murder. Good boy. Good lad. I'm Rupert Davis, remember, son? <laughs> well, good heavens, get it right. All that's three of you ugly anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, of course, is why Chuck is wearing his dark bin, so he won't be recognized. Good. Ready for the next flashback? The next <coughs> replay. Sheila Hancock, the last one. You asked for a part of Nobby's flashback when Nobby offers a ciggy to Danny, which at least shows that cigarettes can kill. <laughs> Here it is. Stan and Vera started sorting the money out, so I went in for a chat. Must be looking out the window. I'll check out there, can you? Well, why don't you try opening it? Because it's locked. Is that the key then? No, why don't you stop interfering? I'm only trying to help, mate. Do you want a ciggy? Yeah. We'll have a couple, eh? Right. Uh, time is up, is it? Or have we got more time for uh, questioning? Questions. Let's go oh, on until we're stopped. Can I just, if this is just a recap, whose pad is this that they've come back to to put the money in? It's your pad. <coughs> Do you live there? It looks no, like I an don't office. I live there, but it's mine. You use it? Is I it rent it. Gaff that you use? Yeah. Have those locks always been on the windows? <coughs> why? Because the villains are getting in and turning you over. <laughs> why were you so long in the lavatory? I mean, I'm sorry to be personal, but. Oh, I was <laughs> Why did you open the window first, too, when you went in? I mean, it's an extraordinary thing to do, well, going to the loo. stupid idiot had been smoking. The smell in there was terrible. He'd told me to keep a lookout. I mean, Christ, what could, what's the girl meant to do? Oh, I see. You were supposed to be looking out in the loo as well, were you? Well, that's what he told me to do, the idiot. But it... Uh, well, I see, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Stan. Stan, Stan <laughs> thank you. Little control, please. <laughs> Uh, but, Stan, you did uh, suggest to the murdered man that he uh, lock the window. Right. And he did lock it. Yes, he did, in front of me. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it would it would have precluded anybody coming in that window. I should think so. And since you were the last person in the room, right? Therefore, neither Vera nor Chuck could have got in through the window. Right. Got to tell you, right? It mm -hmm. only opens from the inside, does it? That lock. That's right. Mm. Jim, could I ask uh, Nobby? Uh, did you actually ever handle the knife? I didn't actually see you pick it up, but did you ever handle it? No, I didn't open the money. Did the police take any fingerprints at any point? Yes. I mean, have you, did, you, did those no, people that no, come in... we've got no equipment on us for that. Even after... Would you expect them to tell you that he picked up the knife? Well... Yeah. <laughs> no, if he no, 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 they have a special department there, that's all right. 
Well, that John time. did it, but crying, look at him. <laughs> look at that look on his face. He's as guilty as a sin. Uh, yes, no, that was on its way. You heard the, the police cars arriving. That, that would, would have the fingerprint department, of course. Yes, with the rest of them arriving, probably the doctor and the ambulance and so on. Yes, questions? Nobby, have you been friends with Stan a long while? No, I don't mean Nobby, I mean, I mean yeah. Harry Landis. <laughs> I beg your pardon. We went That's to Chuck. We, we, was in, we was in a proof school together. Right. right. <laughs> and have you always worked with him? So always. I'm his best mate. You're very right. close. Yeah. You're very close. And you know that room frightfully well as a result of that. I'm always in there playing poker all night. Yeah. Are you very right. fond of him? Hey. Are you very fond of him? We're in love. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're carrying the part a bit too far, aren't you? <laughs> George, question. I would like to ask Chuck, when you walked into the room, what time was it on the clock? Any nice, because he's a bubble, you know. You know what a bubble is, don't you? Bubble and squeak. That's it. And they're lovely people, because one of them cuts my hair in Camden Town. <laughs> and he always greets me. He says it means good morning, how are you? He says, Kopsa Tolomosu. Is that something nice? It means cut your ruddy throat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what has that got to do with the time on the wall? What time was it when you walked in? I don't room? know. I didn't look at the clock. Because he said the time when we first come in, and he's the governor, and he's always right. Right. Yeah. Mm. He's always right, is he? I see. Yes? I'm Mr. thoroughly confused. <laughs> so yes, I. Jim. <laughs> Could I ask, uh, Vera, uh, can you tell me whether you're left or right-handed? Right-handed. Huh. End of question? End of question. I would like to ask you, Inspector, um, could the, the blow have been um, struck from uh, the front of the body, or do you think it was, uh, must have been from the back? I think it came from the back, yeah. Mm. Um, the angle and all that sort of thing. It could have... Uh, I mean, you could have been standing in front of the man, yeah, I suppose. You could, could have done that, but I doubt it somehow. I think it was a mm. definite one from behind. Because the angle would be yeah. wrong, wouldn't it? And this man was tremendously tall, perhaps. Or tall. How tall was the deceased? I suppose about 5'7". Five, 5'7". Seven. Five, seven. And how tall is Stan? Stan, about 5'11", 6". Mm -hmm. Thank you. And beautifully timed. That's the end of the questioning. Time is up, panel. I want you now to finish filling in your whodunit cards. I'm starting. Uh, the guilty party's name, or the names, and any clues that you might have spotted, please. But before you at home finally decide whodunit, I'm going to show you one more short clip of the action which has definitely got a clue in it. Now, nobody in the studio here will be able to see it, so they can't cheat. It's just for you at home, so please watch carefully. Oh, I picked on the phone with his mother in the middle of a job. Whose fags are these? Nobby's. Nobby? Pack's empty. You sorted out the fivers? Yes. Right, let's do the split up then. And I got on with the money counting, so I didn't see Danny again till he was dead. Ah. So you were the last one in there then? What? Oh, I don't know. I mean, what with the money and everything, anybody could have slipped in that room without being noticed. I wonder if that made you change your mind. Right, panel, may I have your cards, please? Thank you, Jim. George. Let go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right, panel, I've got your cards, so you can't change your mind when you hear what your next-door neighbour has to say. Uh. Let's start off with you, Stratford Johns. Who done it and why, please? Ah, well, of course Stan did it. Because basically he fancied the bird. He also was the last one in to see the murdered man at 3.20. And he uh, had the knife, which he put down on the table, was there at, at the end of just before he went in. And nobody else had the motive or the opportunity. That's it. Sheila. He sounds awfully sure of himself, doesn't he? <laughs> Coppers always are. More than I am, I tell you. I, I <laughs> think it's something to do with this devoted relationship between Chuck, Chuck and Stan. I think Chuck did it, ordered by Stan. The only one clue that I'm absolutely certain of is that there's two keys to that window, one of which Chuck put in his pocket. So therefore, he either gave the key to Stan to do it, to get, get out and back through the loo, or he did that himself and I'm going to plump for him doing it himself. I think she's involved somewhere, but I can't, I can't work it out, I do. Well, that seems very, very good. George. I've got one or two other clues, but I'll save them for later. Well, first of all, you've got to deal with motive. There's got to be some sort of impetus in order to start to commit a crime against your own peers. The guy with the greatest motive would be Nobby. He's got a bird on the string, and there's all that money on the table. I saw him having been 
standing here watching it all, I saw him dip into the table. I think when he picked up that little packet of bread, he picked up <coughs> a little thing called a knife. And all of a sudden, he walks into the room, and he walks into the room for the purpose of facing his adversary, Vera's husband, to offer him a cigarette. Isn't that sweet and considerate? <laughs> he goes in to say, how about a cigarette, old buddy? Now, the clock, the clock is very important, and the continuity of this was uh, just a little too rapid. I think that the crime was committed when he walked in, and the time on the clock was 3.20-something. But the clock was wrong. The clock was at least 10 minutes off, so that when he walked in, and the name... Well, anyway, now <laughs> he did it. <laughs> I think he did it. Thank you for your erudition. Jim. Well, I think Chuck did it. From what I could see, almost everybody else handled a knife, but I didn't see him handle it. Now, I, I would have thought if you were going to kill somebody, you wouldn't sort of leave your fingerprints on a knife, so you obviously wouldn't handle it. And that's about the only killer I could think of, really. Basically, you know, it's just a guess. I see. Well... Now we will see. It's very interesting. Let's see if they've got it right. Ready for the big moment? Will the real who done it stand up, please? Yeah! You did it! delighted as our first visitor from the United States. Congratulations and well done, George. Thank you very, very much. Very, very good right indeed. Marvellous. <laughs> well, just to clear up the details, Nobby's motive was to get rid of Danny so that he could marry Vera. And I will now show you the four clues that I mentioned earlier. Number one, Nobby's flashback was a lie. The clock was showing 3.20 when he entered Danny's room, and yet Danny had already established it was showing 3.20 when the gang arrived at the office. Number two, he offered Danny cigarettes from an almost full pack, and yet Stan found that Nobby's cigarette packet was empty. Number three, at the end of Nobby's flashback, the money is laid out on the table in five neat piles, whereas if he'd gone in to see Danny before the others, the money counting could not have reached that stage. And number four, the murder weapon is no longer on the table. Now, don't forget to join us next week at the same time when our panel will include the six million dollar bionic woman, Lindsay Wagner, Dr. Magnus, don't wave your arms about Pike. <laughs> and the old bloodhound himself, Patrick Mower. And if the manager of the bank that was robbed at the beginning of this story happens to be watching, uh, we've kept a small reward of finding it for you. But I can assure you that the rest of it will... It Excuse me, sir. Police property. A correction. I can assure you that all of it will be back with you in the morning. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and good night. <laughs>